lions, one of the best known predators on the planet. They are admired and respected the world over for their raw power, their incredible size, and their majestic beauty. In the wild, there are two formally recognized lion subspecies. The African lion is found in Africa, south of the Sahara Desert. The Asiatic lion exists in one small population around Gear Forest National Park in western India. So, why are there no lions in Europe? Once upon a time, Hercules, the son of Zeus, was challenged by the king of Tyrans to slay a troublesome lion that was attacking his people. To prove his strength, the mighty Hercules cornered the lion in its cave and choked it with his bare hands. But of course, this is a mere myth, and the depictions of lions on Bronze Age artwork, tools, weapons, and utensils were thought to have been copied from elsewhere. But in 1978, two German zoo archaeologists came across some feline bones while digging in Tyrans, Greece. This was where Hercules was supposed to have killed the mighty beast. The feline bones were unmistakably those from a lion. It seemed that lions once roamed Europe during the Bronze Age and lived alongside people. But where did they come from? And where did they go? Lion-like pantherine felids emerged in Tanzania around 1.7 to 1.2 million years ago. From there, it is thought that they dispersed northwards into Eurasia during the early and middle Pleistocene. The lions that inhabited much of Europe in our dim and distant past have included a range of species. The oldest fossils excavated from the United Kingdom are estimated at 680,000 years old. These belong to Panthera fossilis, also known as Panthera leofossilis, or Panthera speleofossilis. It was one of the European lions that are thought to have evolved from the African lions that traveled out of the African continent. Panthera fossilis survived in parts of Europe from the early to the middle Pleistocene and spread into western Siberia. They were larger than modern lions. They would have dwarfed modern lions if they stood side by side. Over time, however, they evolved into smaller forms. Fossil evidence shows that they had a wider skull than their modern counterparts, with less specialized teeth. They lived alongside the saber-toothed cats, bears, wolves, and hyenas that also roamed Eurasia during the Pleistocene. Did you know that only 5.7% of our viewers are subscribed to Fax Machine? If you enjoy our content and want to help us grow, hit that subscribe button. Let's aim to get that number up to at least 15%. Thank you. Nobody can be certain if these prehistoric lions roamed alone or were sociable like today's lions, living in prides. Their hunting techniques may have differed from today if they were lone hunters, but they would have competed with the other predators of the time for the prey species that were on offer. These would have included the likes of narrow-nosed rhinoceros, straight-tusked elephants, southern mammoth, moose, steppe bison, and fallow deer. At first, this European lion was considered a subspecies of our modern Panthera leo, which was common in East Africa then. However, genetic analysis suggests that it was a different but closely related species instead. Either way, the early Panthera fossilis disappeared from Europe, but not due to climate change or human encroachment. This early species of lion evolved and gave rise to the better known Upper Pleistocene European cave lion, Panthera leospelia. This lion diverged from modern lions around 500,000 years ago and was common throughout Eurasia and North America. It was able to spread between Eurasia and North America via the Bering Land Bridge that joined the two landmasses. Although smaller than the earlier Panthera fossilis and the American lion, Panthera leospelia was still larger than modern-day lions by as much as 12%. It would have been an impressive sight. Its muzzle was longer and narrower than today's lions. Their fur would have been a similar color, a beige brown, but it would have been much thicker. To cope with the climate, their coats were much longer and denser to keep them warm during the much cooler Pleistocene. This cave lion lived in open habitats such as the steppe and open grasslands. It relied on its speed to take down its prey, stalking them through the grass before launching themselves and sprinting after them. It was widely distributed across Europe northwest North America, and into Asia, including China and North Korea. They frequented mountainous regions where they could find an abundant and unsuspecting food source, cave bears. During the winter months, the bears and their cubs were hibernating, and the lions would take advantage of that, often crawling into the caves and feasting upon them. Other sources of Pleistocene food would have been giant deer, red deer, 
wild horse, musk ox, aurochs, steppe bison, young woolly rhino, and young woolly mammoth. Competition with the European Ice Age leopard, cave hyenas, brown bears, and gray wolves would have occurred. Squabbles would have broken out at carcasses with the most fearsome animals, taking the largest portion of meat. But when the climate began to shift, it was the most adaptable of these species, rather than the most fearsome, that would survive the longest. So, Panthera fossilis evolved, and eventually gave rise to Panthera spelea. But what happened to that? There is evidence that the cave lion was hunted by early humans. They were likely killed out of protection for early settlements, but they were used for other things too. Their fossilized canines have been found with holes in them, suggesting that they were worn as jewelry by some. They were also hunted for their pelts by Neanderthals during the Middle Paleolithic, as well as modern humans during the Upper Paleolithic. They were greatly admired, or perhaps feared, animals of prehistoric times, as they have appeared multiple times in cave paintings across Europe. But they became extinct just as the Pleistocene was coming to an end. Some may have survived in the far north of North America, but those in Europe were extinct by around 10,000 years ago. This corresponds with the abrupt end of the last ice age, a time when the northern hemisphere warmed considerably, ice sheets melted, and the sea levels rose. The climate of the southern hemisphere also changed. The species of the world had to adapt or die. The end of the ice age was not only marked by a distinct change in global climate, but also the mass extinction of the Pleistocene megafauna, and the European cave lions were no exception. The grasslands gave way to forests and the prey species that relied on grazing began to struggle for food. In turn, the predators that relied on the woolly mammoths, woolly rhinos, and the like would have felt the effects of their dwindling prey. As the herbivore populations began to fall, the cave lions relied on reindeer as their main source of food. They were beginning to adapt. But they were also under pressure from humans. As people invaded their habitat and sought them out for their skins and fur, the cave lion was being catapulted towards extinction from all sides. They underwent a population bottleneck between 47,000 and 18,000 years ago, a term used to describe a huge loss of population size which dramatically decreases a species genetic diversity, a recipe for disaster. Remarkably, Frozen lion cub specimens have been discovered from the Ice Age. Each is only a week or two old, but being covered in the permafrost and deprived of oxygen, they have been beautifully preserved and provide an insight into Ice Age Eurasia. Although the Ice Age spelled the end of Europe's cave lion, that wasn't the end of lions on the continent. The Romans were well known for their bloodthirsty battles with wild animals in their arenas. But they had to capture those animals from the wild and transport them to where they would be slain by Venatores or pitted against other wild beasts. The lions used in the Colosseum were Barbary lions. These lived in the mountains and deserts of North Africa from Morocco to Egypt. The trick was to capture the lions alive without injuring them. The Venatores, who were tasked with hunting the wild animals, came up with novel ways to best capture them. Some concealed a pit and baited it with a lamb and then lowered a cage over the lion once it jumped into the pit. Some Venatores dressed up in sheepskins and danced around a cornered lion, taking it in turns to dive out of the way. They did this repeatedly until the lion dropped from exhaustion. Once captured, the lions were then transported across the empire to their final destination. Of course, the lions that were used by the Romans weren't wild lions roaming throughout Europe, but they became a significant part of Europe's culture. Although today we associate lions mostly with Africa and partly with Asia, they were once far more widespread and helped to shape other continents like Europe. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.